that generational trauma is definitely passed on because it's like the your parents they don't know how to get the help they were kind of in survival mode Right? Like, you're so smart. Gosh, they were, sorry, they you're were so in, smart. Yes. They were in survival mode. They Literally. were just trying to survive. They were trying to put food on the table. And that's why it's hard to fault them. So that's the voice of Zara, who I met a few weeks ago at a Valley Leadership event. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But the reason I brought her on this podcast today was to talk about something she created called the Zen Den. You see, Zara's got a first-hand look at mental health and wellness within her own family, and she could see her fellow students struggling with it as well. So she did something about it. She is just incredible, and I hope you enjoy our conversation today on Learn From People Who Lived It. Hey, what's up? It's me, Chris Powell. And before we start the podcast, I got a question for you. Do you want to start a healthy habit? Do you want to feel great for the rest of the day? And do you want to do all of that in less than three minutes? I'm on a mission to move 1 million people every single day with my nonprofit and app called Move 1 Million. It's fast, easy, fun, and you'll feel great for the rest of the day. Oh, and the best part, it's 100% free. You can find us at m1m.org or search M1M on the Google Play Store or on the App Store. I'd like you to consider for just a moment that more than half of the people who are listening to the sound of my voice will have a heart attack, stroke, or heart failure in their lifetime. However, research shows us that up to 90% of heart disease and stroke is preventable. I think about my own father who died by heart attack at just 47 years old, and I wonder how much longer he'd be around if we'd just known about Health Span MD. Dr. Todd Hurst, a board certified cardiologist is not just my doctor he's helped thousands of people just like you and me with his approach health span md is the way healthcare is supposed to be an ongoing partnership between you and your expert healthcare team that guides you step by step on the best opportunities to achieve your health weight and longevity goals please Take a minute and sign up for his three-step consultation and witness the HealthSpan MD difference for yourself. So you can be here longer for your family and most importantly, yourself. HealthSpanMD.com. HealthSpan MD, an insurance-based practice. Find and learn from people who lived it wherever you get podcasts. Search it using all one word. Learn from people who lived it. Welcome to another episode of Learn From People Who Lived It. Well, howdy, everybody. It is great to be here today. We are at Phoenix Union and Central High School. I'm sitting next to Zara, who I met at an event. We'll talk about all those things here in just a couple of minutes. She's the youngest of five kids, and uh, she's seen that battle of mental health firsthand within her own family and probably one of the reasons she started something called the Zen Den, which we are here to talk about today. So hello, Zara. How are you? Hello, Matthew. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm so excited to speak with you today, and I'm excited to talk about things people don't talk about. Yeah, right? That's kind of the deal. But your generation is really that generation that, at least in my opinion, is starting to break that stigma and break that mold, right? Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. I think our generation, there can be a lot of negative views and negative light on us, but I think one thing that we can fully take ownership is holding people accountable and making change. And the first step to change is uh, addressing the problem. And I think we're addressing the problem and we're talking about it finally. It's been many years, (laughs) but that's the beauty in it. All right. So let's uh, let's just jump right into this. And I've got a bunch of questions that I want to ask you along the way and we'll we'll just jump in. But you created something here called the Zen Den. Yes. Um, So I think the first question that most people would have after they hear something like that is, what is that? Right. What did you start? That's a great question. (laughs) So in short terms, uh, the Zen Den is a mental health and wellness club aimed at providing support and comfort and spreading positivity to our campus community and others around us. Now, a little story about Zen Den. So... I think we all can agree that we kind of had some issues sophomore year, maybe a little pandemic or something like that. Mm. <laughs> and it hit everybody, didn't right, it? Right, it did. And uh, throughout seeing uh, the damages, especially with uh, students struggling with online learning and just adjusting, and I think it was just a challenging time for everyone, but young kids especially. And uh, the second semester, we came back to school in person, 
and I spoke with my sports medicine teacher and I kind of just said my ideas that I've been having since like freshman year about like mental health is such a major issue and problem in our society and I see kids around me every single day struggling with depression and anxiety and eating disorders and you know the list goes on and on but there's nothing done about it you know there was no club Mm -hmm. there was no organization you know I think every school requires to have you know counselors and social workers which you know they're amazing I know them personally personally at our campus however you know as a freshman As a sophomore, you know, I didn't know those resources were available to me. So, you know, I'm telling these ideas to my teacher and she's like, okay, well, why don't you just start it? And I was like, oh, you could do that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I, you know, I took the measure. That's funny. A lot of people just don't even know that they can start. It's like, yeah, go for it. Exactly. And I think it just seemed intimidating to me because I think that was probably the first time I was you know, starting something, you know, I, I've ran things, I've been president of clubs and stuff like that, but that was the first time where it's like, you're, everything is fresh, you know, there's no rubric to how you're Mm. supposed to go about it. So I first talked to our school social worker and I kind of just said my ideas and he was really on board and we just got the paperwork rolling and it was kind of a process. We had to, you know, get it approved and Things like that. And Did you run into any roadblocks? Were there any adults who were like, oh, I don't know if this is a good idea? Because it seems to me like everybody, as soon as you started talking, was like, green light, green light, green light, green light. Yeah, well, I'm really grateful that uh, our school has such a supportive community. And, you know, I think at first it was kind of like, yeah, sure, you can you can do whatever you want. You can start it. Mm. Um, I don't think, you know, many of them really understood the concept maybe you know the extent of the things I wanted to do but I was I had a lot of support and I think that was because they saw the issues too yeah it was kind of just a a consensus and agreement that like kids are struggling and they're going through a lot and it was like okay we know that student to student is going to be more beneficial than you know sometimes adult to student Sure. It was just a different dynamic. It is. So, you know, you connect with students, you're able to relate to them. There is an age difference. You know, I think, you know, you can understand your own people. You know, you know what I'm saying. Totally. <laughs> I, get, I completely get it. And, and what's important to note here is that this isn't therapy. This isn't no, like people no. coming in and laying on a couch no. and sitting down and talking about their problems. When you, I mean, you do talk about things like that, but what happens at the average Zen Den experience? Yeah, no, I think... Uh, people's immediate thought with getting mental health help or services, the immediate thought is therapy and medication. Mm. Uh, But throughout the research that I've done, and I think just the research that's out there, there are so, so many ways to improve your mental health and well-being. And I'm a strong believer in having uh, strong community structures that helps overall mental health and physical health because, you know, those are so correlated with each other. So how I wanted Zenden to run, the first thing is no pressure. You know, I wanted it to be very relaxed. Like, I think my first idea is having, I literally wanted to have, like, a yoga music in the background, <laughs> like, have a, a wax warmer, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I love it. Just make it a very relaxing and welcoming environment. So that's always my main goal in every meeting is uh, if people are Make it inviting. Yeah, make it inviting, exactly. And so we always start with check-ins. I love to do uh, your highs and lows of the week or of the last time, you know, I spoke to them. And uh, something that surprised me, kids are so honest about it. (laughs) Because, like, at the beginning, you think they're going to be like, oh, no, I don't really have a high, I I don't really have a low, but... Kids were really honest about their highs and their lows. And one thing that I love seeing is when, you know, I share a high or I share a low. And then another student jumps in and is like, yeah, me too. Right. I'm failing math too. So powerful, (laughs) isn't it? Yeah. And it's just so beautiful to see because you see that we all have more commonalities than we have differences. So Zara, the point the literal point of this podcast learned from people who lived it is to help other people feel less alone and encourage them to talk about it. I love that. That is exactly what we are here to do today is to help other people understand you're not alone. There's other people going through very similar things to you and that if you 
can just kind of open up about it. Tell people how you're feeling, thinking, what kind of stuff is going through your head. Boy, there's just a lot of like, <sighs> yeah, that happens it's a to way. people. It's a way off your shoulders. Right. Like, you are not alone. <laughs> That's it. I want to ask you a question. When people are sharing highs and lows, you don't have to get specific. Mm-hmm. What kinds of what kinds of situations are, are stressing kids out in high school these days that, that you notice from not only your perspective, but, you know, some of your peers? Yeah. Well, you know, everyone is unique and there's a range of issues that people struggle with. But the main thing that I hear students repeat, repeatedly uh, talk about is their stress in school. Their school stress, you know, someone's failing math, you know, oh, I I have late assignments, I'm stressed about school, like, it's constant, I'm anxious about a class, I'm stressed about a class, I'm stressed, like, it's just always, you know? Where do you think that comes from? Is that pressure from parents? Is it pressure from teachers? Well, I think it's pressure all around. Mm -hmm. Okay. Especially. Like, for me personally, I think there is a lot of outside pressure in, oh, the lights just went off in our recording studio. I don't even know how to turn them on. Do you? You need to like wave for it, like wave and <laughs> get some motion. Ah, ah, I have to tell you, okay, there it see? is. We got the lights back on. They just came off. So you don't. It's like know this. motion sensor. You totally don't know this, but a few weeks ago, I was recording a podcast at the Durango Detention right. Center. And I was in talking to this dude, Cordero Holmes, Mm -hmm. and we're literally right in the middle of our podcast, and the entire power in the building went out. No way. Oh, yeah. It was crazy. And so (laughs) when the lights just flickered off here, I thought, here we go again. Okay. Here we go again. No, but anyways, okay, so the pressure is from everywhere. It is, yeah. I think the pressure comes from many sources, and it could be different for everyone. Uh, But for me personally, I feel like the pressure that I have on myself has been the greatest pressure. The expectations, yeah. exactly. The expectations that you have on yourself, on uh, on bettering yourself. I think also there's such a, a stereotype and culture of like you constantly have to better yourself. You constantly have to like hustle and like one up everyone else and that constant go, <sighs> go, go. And, yeah. You know, I feel like it's kind of hypocritical to say that, oh, yeah, this is going to benefit your mental health and it's going to be so good for you. Right. Which it can for some people. But on the other spectrum, if you don't meet every single thing on that checklist, you're going to feel like a failure. Mm. And I think that is a feeling that many students feel in my club. I have a question. Do you think that parents and administrators and teachers understand how important school is to kids? Because what I'm getting out of you is this idea that, you know, there can be this this thought process that's from parents especially mm-hmm. who says, well, my kids don't, they don't care about school. They don't right. get it the way that I get it. But it, from, if I'm hearing you correctly, you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself. You, oh, yeah. You almost don't need mom and dad and teachers to be piling on. Like, you're throwing enough pressure on yourself. No, yeah, exactly. I yeah. think... Huh. I think parents and teachers can see one behavior that a kid is having and const- and directly correlate it to them not caring. Mm-hmm. You know, a kid failed a class or is, you know, not doing the best. Uh, oh, they just don't care. They don't care about their education. They're what's wrong with our generation. Right. But in reality, that kid could care so much. Right. You know, that kid could have been up night, up all night studying and maybe that kid just learns differently. Right. Like I know for me, um, you know, I'd like to say I'm a high achieving student. You know, I try to get all A's and things like that. But by no means can I read a textbook and I'd understand it and I'd get an A. I'd fail the class. So everyone learns differently. And something mm-hmm. I feel like I was never taught was how to learn, how to study. These tools that are going to make me successful in my education I don't necessarily think I had those resources available to me. And I think that's what we can improve on in our education. Okay. So let's get back to this question. What else is stressing kids out these days? What other types of situations? So there's school is one. What's some of the others? School is definitely a big factor. I also think um, relationships, yeah. general relationships. Sure. You know, I'm not talking about just romantic ones, but friend relationships, family relationships, and... Uh, like I remember one time uh, we were all sitting down and and someone was talking about their low and it was a relationship with a friend and, you know, they were struggling, you know, and uh, she was like, oh, we just haven't talked. Like, oh, we just kind of avoided each other. Mm. Um, I think 
many people can relate. That's not how you properly communicate. And everyone else was like, yeah, great. Cut her out. You know, it is the recipe for stress is to have unfinished business. Exactly. Right. But I also think what stuck out to me was there was no communication. Sure. But you can't really blame the kid because who taught them how to communicate? That's it. Are you or and when I say you, I mean you and high school students. Right. Are you stressed out about things like your relationship with your parents? Are you stressed out about things like money? Are you stressed out about things like college? Are you stressed out about things like politics? Like where do some of those, all all of the above, (laughs) all of the above thinking about all of that stuff, all of the above. I think, uh, the abundance of information we have, especially with technology and social media has been such an amazing tool, but all of that is so hard to process. Yeah. That pressure of like, we want to make change, we want to start movements, but we have to have self-improvement and we have to make sure we're taking care of ourselves, mm-hmm. but then we also can't take of our, take care of ourselves too much because we have to take care of our families. Right. And you know, you have to get into this college and you have to have this job and you have to also, on top of that, you have to look a certain way and you have to meet right. these types of standards and the list goes on and on and on and on. Who puts that pressure on you? I mean, I think a lot of... I think we put that pressure on ourselves, yeah. if I'm being honest. I think we create the culture, and I think the cultures that we've created haven't necessarily been positive. You know, uh, I'm a very, <laughs> I'm not a black or white type of, I'm very much gray and in the middle, so everything I say, I'm like, but it can also be positive, it can be negative, mm-hmm. uh, but that's just the reality of life. But I think the cultures that we've created are not the best because it's the culture that you have to do so much to be worthy. It's like you can't just be a teenager and you mm. can't just like live and you can't just breathe. You have to it you have to have thing. something that you're and I think and I don't even think it extends to teens. I think it's adults and everyone in life. I think it just looks different in different forms. As generations go further and further, it just looks a certain way. Are you stressed out uh with with regard to parent relationships do kids do kids kind of talk about their parents and any pressure that they're getting from them or 100 percent. yeah volatility yeah i think i think parents can let us have it be let us have it very <laughs> i think parents can be you know supportive and everything however um parents might not know about mental health a lot of students they s- express that no, I can't go to therapy because my mom or dad don't believe in it. Mm. And, you know, you're under 18. Even mm. even the free therapy that's out there, you still need parent signatures for. So That's the reason we need things like the Zen Den. Exactly. Like a good exactly, community space exactly. for your peers to hang exactly. out. Exactly. And I also think, um, especially in regard to the community that we're in, you know, um, our school is, you know, Title I school, so we have a lot of you know, um, first generation immigrant sure. families and things like that. And I think there's a lot of generational trauma that's passed down yes. to kids. You don't like, have to think. I know. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom, for example, she immigrated here um, late 90s and she escaped from the war and from Saddam Hussein's dictatorship. So she came here as a refugee and uh, all alone, three kids, that whole deal, right? And I was born here, but that generational trauma is definitely passed on because it's like the your parents, they don't know how to get the help. They were kind of in survival mode, oh, that, right? That's, you're so smart. Gosh, <laughs> they were, sorry, you're they were so in, smart. <laughs> yes. They were in survival mode. They Literally. were just trying to survive. They were trying to put food on the table. And that's why it's hard to fault them. Also, yes. it's like a lot of times students feel guilty for uh, talking about these things with their parents because it's like, how can you fault them when they were just trying to survive? Well, and the, right? there's a thing. Maslow is famous for having this a hierarchy of needs is what he calls it. Yeah. And when you're when when any of us are in survival mode, there are basic needs that need to get met before you can start to have the add ins. Right. Exactly. So if you don't have food on the table, a place to live, school for your kids, right. a car to get everybody to where they need to go. Like, I'm sorry, everything else is kind of off the table until we get those basic needs met. Now, once we get those basic needs met, now we can start building on it. But what I'm hearing from you is like you personally, your situation was we came here. It took time to get our basic needs met. Yeah. 
and nobody can really get through that any other way than to kind of survive it. It's exactly. tough to thrive in that environment. Exactly. There, there is no happiness. Mm. It's surviving. And I think a lot, a lot of students can relate to the fact that, you know, if you're going to talk to your parents and your family about your mental health issues or maybe just about what you're feeling, it's yeah. like, oh, well, we gave you a roof. We gave you food on the table. You know, yada, yada. It's like this list goes on and on. And it's just, mm. it's hard to get help and yeah. get through to your parents when uh, they don't see the issue. You know full well that your parents, my parents, mm-hmm. all of our, that that whole group of people, there is a connotation that to need therapy is weak. Exactly. Right? It, it is like, it's make-believe. Like, exactly. Like, life's tough, suck it up. That's how it is. Right? There's that attitude out there from parents. I can yeah. tell by the look in your eye that you've <laughs> maybe heard that a time or two in your yeah, life. Yeah. No, there is. It's... Uh, I'm going to give a little anecdote about this. Please. Uh, So uh, once uh, we were in online learning and I was in my government class and, you know, it's definitely a different type of way of learning, right? Mm. So uh, students were struggling. It was kind of like a collective. We're all like messaging like, this doesn't make sense. You know, let's talk to our teacher. So, you know. We did the most dangerous thing, and that's unmute our mics. <laughs> and uh, we unmuted, and uh, we kind of collectively were like, "We're the roof." And again, just went off again. Yeah, yeah. You just got to do a little dance. And, and Is that right? <laughs> yeah, you got to kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. What do people do when they have meetings here? I'm gonna the get suspense. up and flip. There's a light switch over there. I'm gonna go hit. I'm gonna see if that works. Okay, but keep giving your anecdote. I'll be right, right back. Right. This is good for the plot. <laughs> yeah. Hi, we're back. <laughs> yeah, that should work. All right, let's see if that goes. Hopefully. Okay, so you guys, so you unmute your microphone. Right, what happens yes. Next? So we kind of spoke to the teacher, like, is there other ways that we can get this material? Maybe, uh, like, through a podcast or auditory ways? Like, I know I'm an auditory and visual learner. Um, and the teacher was really receptive, and it was a good discussion. And then uh, a parent was there, you know, and they kind of unmuted for their kid and put their camera on and was like, you guys are wasting time. Like, this is why you guys are failing because you're not actually learning history. You're just taking time and you're complaining. Mm. And me, like, I've never been one to be quiet. (laughs) I was like, no, we're not complaining. We're communicating because we have certain needs and our class can run much more efficiently if we're just discussing about what works for us. You know, it's not the teacher's fault. It's not our fault. It's nobody's fault. It's just we just need to discuss and mm-hmm. talk about what's going to work for us. Gosh, that's and such a real yeah, thing you just and, said. Yeah, and she was like, and she was like, well, in my generation, like we didn't even have access to laptops, oh, and boy. you guys have everything accessible f- for you guys, and yada yada. It just went on and on, and um, uh, it oh, was, it's tough. It was. It was tough. It was. It was hard because it's like we need to have these discussions to make us successful. And when we get reactions like that, like that's going to discourage us. That's it not shuts gonna, you down immediately. It's, exactly. It's going to shut us up. It's going to be like, okay, we'll just suck it up and I'll just get the bad grade because uh, I'm not learning properly. It's just, oh, whatever. My voice doesn't matter. And one thing that I really tried to tell, you know, our Zenden crew and, and kids around me that your voice does matter. Yeah, it does. It, it matters more than you think it does. It only takes one person to make change and make things happen. And, and it doesn't have to be big. You know, you don't have to start a movement where billions of people are following you. No, it literally just your small community, your family around you. I think, uh, like I mentioned before, the first problem, I mean, the first step to change or however you want to call it is learning about it, educating and that's a little bit how we kind of incorporate that into Zenden as well. Uh, you know, we'll have kind of a week where we talk about depression mm-hmm. and anxiety. And, and what kinds of things are you discussing? I mean, it's more than just here's the definition of anxiety. Right. It's it like what, like what's making you anxious? Or... Right. I, I always like, if I'm introducing a mental health topic, I always like to start with a discussion. Okay. So it's like, uh, what does depression mean to you? Mm. How have you seen depression? Uh, What can we do as our small little community uh, to help kids who have depression? Mm -hmm. If you're having depression, then what is going to make you feel better about that? Uh, I really, 
emphasize like put yourself in that person's shoes mm. if you're not already in it mm -hmm. which most of the time they are yeah <laughs> but put yourself in that person's shoes what would make you feel better to hear yeah and actually recently mm. so powerful Zara what would make you feel better to hear exactly and recently we uh, collaborated with our social worker um, on campus and actually after our podcast, if you want to walk down and take a look at it, uh, we have a wall of kind of mantras. And in each little envelope, there's different emotions. So there's sad, happy, jealous, anxious, overwhelmed, lazy, whatever. The list goes on and on. And in each uh, envelope, there's like a little card. And you take it out, and you can take it with you. And it has kind of like an affirmation uh, for that specific that. emotion. So Zendan kind of took it on. Uh, the last quarter and we kind of made it a little bit different so we put on the corner like come to zen den <laughs> thursday <laughs> wednesdays after school yeah. a little promotional material uh and then we also put on the other side like we talked about every single emotion like, like okay let's look at these uh, depression mantras okay think about it feel it we're depressed right now what would make us feel better to hear and we switched up a lot of them because it's like some of them were super corny. I'm like, if I hear that, like, I'm not going to, that's not going to make me feel better. Right, right, right. Like, <laughs> like there's certain things, you know? Yeah. Uh, and that's what I mean. Like, student to student is much more impactful uh, just because we understand kids better. Because they just need to honestly feel like they're not alone. And exactly. once that happens, it's almost like the problems can kind of disappear. Exactly. Right? Exactly. I know, I know I have felt very alone in you know, being stressed and overwhelmed with school because it's kind of like, oh, well, I kind of put it on myself. You know, I'm the one taking the AP classes and I'm the one doing the extracurriculars and the research and, you know, yada, yada. Like, sure. I, I made these choices. Um, so, you know, I felt discouraged before to, like, speak to anyone about it, about what's making me stressed or anxious um, because, you know, it's like, oh, well, this is your problem. I'm like, okay, well... I mean, it's my choices, but, like, I can do it. I'm not saying, like, oh, I need to, like, let go of my extracurriculars or drop my classes. Like, I'm not that stressed, but I just want to talk about it. Right. Um, it's hard. Let's it's hard, yeah. Like, let's just acknowledge that th th there are moments along the way that are more difficult and challenging than others. Exactly. It doesn't mean you want to jump ship. It doesn't mean you want to completely exactly. abort the mission. It means, like... Okay, gosh, we're just, hard. we're just in a rut right now. We're just, <laughs> yeah. just stuck for a hot sec. Yeah, and 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 you stay in that rut if you're mm. not if you're not talking about it. Like if you're not getting the help and what you need, like you're gonna stay in that same position. You know, I read something like you can't keep doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Yeah, it's called insanity. Yeah, that's literally <laughs> the definition much. of it. That's what you're talking about. I know that you are somebody who volunteers with uh, Teen Lifeline. Mm -hmm. uh, is that still something you're active in, or is it something that you used to do? It's something that I used to do. Okay, how did you get started in that space, and why did you want to do that? So I, uh, I think it was my sophomore or junior year. Um, I was looking for like volunteer opportunities. Mm -hmm. And um, the social worker was like, oh, I saw this. I thought you'd be interested in it. I was like, okay. Uh, and it was like a, a six-week type of like intensive like, training about mental health. And okay. like, each week was about different topics. So uh, it was like uh, depression and anxiety. And we kind of like went over that and what it means. And then also like how to help a student that's struggling with these things. And because, you know, the goal is to like work on the hotline and, you know, help students um, that are, you know, in a crisis in that situation. Right. So, you know, that requires, you know, training and things like that. So each week you have different topics, uh, like we had drug, like runaway, teen pregnancy, things of that nature. And we kind of, uh, when you're training, you're kind of doing scenarios of it. So like someone would fake, like, you know, being on the other call and you're like, okay, hi, like, oh, I understand that you feel this way because of this thing. And honestly, the main thing that I took away from all of that uh, is that when you're trying to help someone that's going through a crisis like that, they want to feel heard. Mm. That is the biggest thing. Like, out of all that information and the knowledge and the experience, they want to feel heard more than anything. They want someone to listen to them. Like, why are they calling you? Because they need someone, 
uh, to hear them, <laughs> to right. acknowledge that what they're going through is challenging, to, you know, maybe give them some guidance. Like a lot of the times, uh, you know, we'll give, you know, resources like, oh, there's this place and this place that you can go to, obviously depending on the situation. But many times the students like don't necessarily want the resources. They want to just feel heard and right. safe and like loved in a, in a sense. Yeah. So I want to, I want, as we kind of wrap up a little bit, I want to ask you about, say there's somebody listening to our podcast right now and they're like, I love this idea. I want to start the Zen Den at my high school, at my middle school. Um, how did you put it together after talking and winning over the, the, the suits, as I call them, the people that were, you know, <laughs> that dress up for work, uh, after you won those people over and they were aboard, what did you have to do next specifically? Uh, I think it's important to start with your goals. Okay. What do you want? What's your objective? Like for me, it was really important that kids felt, uh, they had an environment that was positive, that was happy, that was exciting. Uh, that's kind of my main goal. Like I measure but that. It's important. I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt you, but that means sometimes yeah. being sad in moments, being upset in moments, yes. being angry in moments, because that is the path to positivity is like exactly. getting this crap off your chest. Exactly. <laughs> right. No, no. I, I, I think it, how you're going to measure success is different. For me, how I measure success is like, are kids feeling better when they uh, walked out than when they came in? Yeah. Like, are kids laughing? Mm. Like, one time I had this, it was, like, pretty recent, actually. I had a meeting, and it was, like, full-on chaos. Like, it was, there was a lot of kids, and, you know, there was no structure, and everyone was kind of, like, it was it was just chaotic, right? And I finished that meeting, and I was like, <sighs> okay, we're done. I was like, that was a good meeting. And my friend was like, that was a good meeting? Like, that chaos was good? I was like, no, that was perfect. Like, they're laughing, they're enjoying their time, they're having fun. Kids are getting to know each other that, like, they didn't know each other in the past. Like, that is successful. Yeah. So I think that's important for us, like, measuring your success. Okay, so figure out your why, get your goals straightened yeah. out, and then what did you have to do? I'm guessing you had probably you had to recruit some, some yeah, friends. Yeah, so it's uh, – so uh, I started with, like, my friend. I kind of mm -hmm. introduced her to the topic, and right. she loved it. So we just went ahead, and we made a flyer. And we recruited for it, and we put announcements in our school announcement, like, hey, um, come join Zenden. It's a mental health and wellness club, spreading positivity. I think we said that there was going to be snacks available, so that helps. Kids love Gotta food. Gotta go snacks. <laughs> Gotta have snacks. And our first meeting was, like, really, like, I think we had a pretty good turnout. We had, like, around 25 kids. And, That's uh, incredible. And everyone kind of introduced these uh, introduced each other and like I was making like a bunch of jokes and my friend was making a bunch of jokes and uh, I think one thing that I stress about um, leadership and kind of being in that role is uh, a leader is someone who listens right and I never want to be like oh I'm the president and I'm better than everyone else no 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 I it's more like we're we're on the same level like we're friends like I now I'm like friends with everybody that's in our club <laughs> like I have everyone's Instagram is very you know not formal but I think um kind of removing that like sense of authority is going to help kids feel comfortable and safe and I think this can go with um our school and administration as well is that uh, when you make a kid feel comfortable they're going to talk and in return you're going to listen you know, because they're comfortable and they're going to be honest with you. So, you know, uh, every meeting is, is different. You know, I always like to take the consensus of the group. Like I said, I'm not like, oh, we're going to do it my way and this is how we're going to do it. No, I ask everyone's feedback. I'm like, okay, uh, it seems like we were interested about this topic. Is that something you guys want to cover next week? Or uh, are we interested in doing some more events on campus? Um, that's kind of a big part of our club as well is we want to learn and take what we, that community that we have in our club and then bring it out and yeah. you know help other kids I think this is really incredible what you're doing and it's one of the reasons that I wanted to uh, have you on this podcast after you know I met Zara because we were at this Valley Leadership uh, evening where they were celebrating the man and woman of the year which yeah. is something that they do and one of the one of the people that was celebrated was Chad Gaston yes. who's Chad Gaston uh, Chad Gaston is our superintendent yeah and he is and then you have a principal what's her name uh, Avalos, Miss Avalos. Yes. And so both of them together are really instrumental in making sure that you are supported in this effort. 
You guys yes. know how I feel. Everything starts at the top, including you, girlfriend, right? <laughs> like, honestly, I mean, for you to come in here as a student and create this, uh, it's my opinion that you are creating something that could scale. Do you know what yeah. that means? Uh, explain it to me. Okay, so in business, it's like creating an idea that you could put in almost any place yeah. and it would work. Yes. You, McDonald's yeah. scales, yeah. right? Yeah. They're, they're, they're everywhere, on every corner mm-hmm. now, right? You could have the, the, to me, the Zen Den should be in every single high every school in America. Is. Oh, completely. Right? I, I, I just, I also want to say that like, um, there's definitely like other schools that have mental health clubs and things of that nature. Uh, but I think everyone should. I think it should be a requirement. Like I want, um, in my vision of bettering our mental health as a community, it starts with our school. It starts with our education. And, you know, a lot of times when I speak to adults about that, like it starts with our education, it's like, well, you know, that's like, you can never change that. Like our education has been stagnant pretty much for yeah. the last like hundred years. We want Everything if we has have that changed. Attitude, right. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, not much has changed, but... It's students that are making the change. It's students that are, you know, talking with the superintendent about, like, these issues that are going on. And I think uh, students can sometimes feel kind of small. Like, oh, like, what am I going to do? Like, my voice doesn't necessarily, like, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not that powerful. I don't have money. I don't, whatever. The list goes on and on. But it's like an email can be so powerful. Sure. <laughs> like emailing like your officials, your board members, the superintendent, like just starting, just having your ideas are so important. And that passion is going to get you in so much places in life. I want to ask you this, this, this thing that I can't kind of keep thinking about as we talk, which is I'm wondering what do the other high school students in here at Phoenix Uni at Central – what do you think they think of Zen Den? Do they think it's like this goofy thing? Do they have a stigma about it? Or do you think that they have a, a pretty good attitude about the Zen Den? I mean... Honestly. It, yeah, honestly, it goes both ways. Okay. There's definitely a stigma. Like, you know, we could be doing an event and I could be like, oh, like, come write a letter to yourself. And it's right. like, it seems silly. And I also want to say, especially I feel like within men, um, because I think there's so much toxic masculinity. Oh. And, say it, girl. You know, Please, that say it. is just a huge, huge issue. It's like, uh, I feel like the the female students um, that are getting help are more willing to like open up and kind of talk about these things. Um, but I feel like, especially within the guys, it's much more reserved. And you know, men are more likely to die by suicide. And I think that statistic just says a lot about what's going on in our world. Like clearly there's an issue. And I think that culture, uh, especially within, you know, athletes and within that community, it's like, no, you have to be tough and you have to be a man and you have to, you know, do all these things because, because if you cry or, or if you talk about Mm. the fact that you're stressed or going through something, you're weak and you're not useful in society which in reality, that's just stupid. Like, it's just, I'm sorry. Call it's what like, it is. Girl. It's funny. Call like, what it is. It is stupid. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Makes like no sense. I think uh, the more that you talk about these things, the more that you get it out. Right. Uh, it's just going to change the culture. And, and there's a time and a place for everything. Exactly. Like, don't get me wrong, right? right? If, you're, if you're on the football team... <laughs> It's probably not a great time and opportunity to break down and and start getting with your feelings, right? In the middle of a game. There is, you know, Celine Dion. I don't know. Do you know her? Yeah, yeah. The singer. She's this great quote. (laughs) She has this great quote, which is, you don't have to be good all the time. You have to be good when it's time. Yeah. And and I think we can apply that to our lives as a a means to say, like, (sighs) relax a little bit, okay? Like, we're not asking you to to be perfect right now. I love that. It's okay to be a little messy in this moment. I love that. I think um, I can definitely relate to that, Mm. especially as, you know, a student who I feel the need, like I need to be perfect all the time. I need to kind of represent my community and represent my school. And I need to always get the good grades. And I always need to take every leadership opportunity and, you know, fill every hour of my day and studying and things. And honestly, that caused me to burn out. Like at the end of junior year, I reached ultimate burnout because 
I couldn't say no, and I had such a pressure that I needed to be perfect, and I think especially in students that are, you know, doing amazing and doing excellent, you know, and you get all these praise, like, sure. oh, you're such a good student, Zara, and like, you oh, you keep, totally you got going. this, you know, like, it, and you want to, like, oh, you have to meet all these expectations, but in reality, I couldn't be perfect, and it, it wasn't realistic for me to take on every single opportunity, and in the end, I just wasn't happy. I was, I felt like I was letting myself down all the time, and it took me a while to realize that it's okay to say no, and I don't have to be perfect because it's just not attainable. And I, and I, I told myself that I'm just going to do what I love. You know, I love Zenden. You know, I'm really involved in our marketing program and things like that. I'm going to do what I love. I'm going to do what drives me and brings me passion because I can't keep up in the way I was keeping up, you know, because like I said before, you can't keep doing the same thing and expecting different results. Uh, So let me wrap up like this. You have this great thing that you do at the Zen Den, which is where everybody comes in and they talk about their highs and they talk about their lows. Let's you and I do the same thing as we we wrap up this conversation. Okay. Okay. So uh, rock, paper, scissors, who goes first? Ready? We go both go paper. (laughs) Oh, all right. I got scissors on paper, so you go first. Okay. Uh, what's your high? What's your low? Uh, I like to start with a low, so I end with a high. Okay. I would say my low would be uh, stressed out about school. I just have a lot of assignments I need to do. Uh, and I would say my high is being on the best podcast ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's working out. It's definitely my high. Yeah. <laughs> was that good? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Listen, I'll, I'll take it because I know it's authentic. Uh, it is. Zara it is. Shared, I'm so excited to be here. Shared with me before we even started that she had put out into the universe earlier this year that she wanted to get on some podcast oh, yeah. and, and make this thing a real thing. And so look at you. You spoke it into this, the universe. I, it's so amazing. This mm. is, I, I'm so appreciative because... Uh, It feels really good to know that my voice is being heard and it matters. It does. And, you know, especially as a first generation student, like I I don't think I would have ever imagined myself being in this place like four years ago. Yeah. Uh, So it's just really cool to know that, um, you know, my future is going to be bright. It sure is. Okay, my low, my high, right? Okay, Matthew, your turn. Mm. Okay, Make so it good. <laughs> my low was, let's see, probably a couple of days ago, I had just, I really got stressed out because I had, not too dissimilar from you, I had so many things on my calendar, so many things on my to-do list that I, uh, that I literally kind of made myself sick. Like my stomach got nauseous and, yeah, yeah. and I just felt like, oh, awful yeah. and not good. And so that was definitely my low. Uh, the high was last night. My son's basketball team made it to the uh, championship, Woo, which they played, okay. <laughs> which they played downtown at the Phoenix Suns Arena. Oh, that's so cool! And while we lost, we certainly enjoyed the heck out of the night, and it was a, a ton of fun to watch my son do what he loves to do. Oh, that must be so rewarding. It is cool. as a parent. Right. You know, seeing them have fun and enjoy their time. I think that's also like what's crucial to know is that like, I think we all focus on the end game so much on, yeah, on getting to that job or getting to that promotion or getting into that school. But like, try to enjoy the process <sighs> because it can be really fun and you can learn a lot um, along the way. So. Try we, to just enjoy the process. We have certainly learned a lot from you too. Okay, awesome. I, mean, this, I learned so much too. This a podcast is appropriately called Learn from People Who Lived It. And you are the quintess- you you're the example of that. You're somebody living this right now. You've created this great landing point for your for your peers, which is unbelievable. And what's excellent from my vantage point is that this isn't the end game for you. Not. Like this is literally when somebody's building a snowman, you're literally just you're building that base, that foundation right now. And yeah. there are more things coming for you, right? I hope so. I <laughs> I really want to create an impact and just help my community in many ways. And I really want to 
just better our world a little bit, you know, make some people smile. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's my goal. So. so what are you going to do when you graduate? We'll wrap with that question. Yeah. What's, uh, what's, the, what's the plan as far as you can see it? So uh, when I graduate, uh, I want to go to university. And uh, my goal is to get my um, MD. So after that is, you know, medical school and residency and that whole um, deal. But throughout undergrad, I really want to do research on mental health mm. and I really want to do more clubs and kind of do similar what I do with Zenden but in my college community too I doubt that I can just turn off my love for my extracurriculars yeah. like that uh, so I definitely want to continue that and in the future I really want to be a part of changing our public health administration and being a public health administrator I want to open up facilities in Iraq uh, which is where my family is from, uh, to give you know mental health services and health services to especially women. So I have a lot of things I want to do. One uh, thing at a time. One thing at a time, right? Yeah. But for now, I want to graduate. <laughs> yeah, and get that taken care of. Yeah. So I can't thank you enough for being with me today. Thank you so very much for being the person you are. I am delighted to see what happens to you next. Oh, thank you so you much bet. for having me. It was such an honor and I hope everyone has a beautiful day and smile today. Oh, that was so fun. You did such a good such a great That was so cool. We have three goals with Learn From People Who Lived It. One, to help you feel less alone. Two, Encourage you to seek out a coach, a therapist, a church, anyone who can help you get through your journey and find some healing. Three, when you're ready, share your story with us. Find Learn From People Who Lived It, wherever you get podcasts. Search it using all one word, Learn From People Who Lived It.